UFO filmmaker and journalist Jeremy Corbell and veteran journalist George Knapp just released the second Jellyfish UFO video on their podcast, Weaponize. I have the video. Let's take a look. Is this the video where the UFO goes into the water? Let's find out. Uh, if you want to find out more about the Jellyfish UFO, I'll put a link in the description so you can watch the original video that we covered here on the channel. Um, and of course, I put links to everything I'm going to show here on the video in the description. If you're new to the channel, you like content like this, hit the subscribe button, y'all. We put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. And of course, hit that like button. That really helps out the videos, y'all. So thank y'all so much for the support there. And of course, comment down below. What do you think of this second video? Let's dive in. I got it lined up. There's a little bit of an intro of kind of refresher of, of the, the, the event, right? And then they're going to show the second video. So let's take a look. It goes out over a large body of water. And from how I understand it, how it was reported to us, is that it's trucking along this body of water and it stops on a dime, just stops abruptly and it descends into the water. And I was asking, okay, so these things hanging down, does it like fall and float down into it like stiff? It goes down into that water. So people are tasked with like observing the area. What's gonna go on now? Cause they can tell it's controlled flight. This is not just something floating with the wind. Right? So after it goes in the water, they continue watching. Right, cause it's not like bobbing and weaving and floating with the wind. This thing was directly going through this highly sensitive area. It goes out over this body of water. It descends down into that water. Everybody's watching this area for about 15 minutes. They're just making sure like what happened? Is there anything going on? This thing comes back out from the water slowly. And again, stiff, and it's not changing thermal signature. And then from how it's described, boom, shoots off at 45 degrees. Very much like what happened at Pantex, where it kind of does this reconnaissance job and then shoots off. But I mean, again, I don't know who's <laughs> documenting this. And like, obviously um, they didn't document the whole thing, uh, you know, with how we're seeing it. So this is the same object. Let's play the second video. So weird, right? Very strange. I mean, it's. Um, you don't think of that video. It's interesting. Um, look, let's let's uh, let's watch it again, right? That, that's why you're here. That's why you clicked on this, right? The other stuff is extra. Let's watch it again. Just pay attention to its movement. Is it doing anything in particular? <clears throat> I do find it interesting. I think it's changing lenses when you see, you see it doing that in front of the lens, right? I think that's a, it's changing, right? Focal lengths. Um, that, that's what I think is happening with that. That's why it's doing that. Um, I don't know. What do y'all think? Tell me in the comments. Um, and there's a moment where it like loses it and kind of catches it, right? Kind of 
uh, go staticky. I don't know if there's an edit there, but if that's continuous, that's interesting, right? Because does that mean it's like affecting it? Because Jeremy does say in this episode that there's some sort of like active radar jamming. He's not confirming it, but he's saying that's what they believe, right? The investigation, the government, U.S. government, they invest, you know, their report that that's what it like some sort of active jamming going on. Like potentially that's why they couldn't lock on. And that is interesting that it does that weird, you know, like it was screwing with the sensor and then it tried to like not get away, but it had to catch it again, right? So I don't know if that was just something with the system. Was that the object doing that? I don't know, right? Whatever this object is. Uh, but that is interesting. So I don't know. Let's watch it again and kind of pay attention. You know, with how we're seeing it. And tell me what else you see in this video, potentially. So this is the same object. Let's play the second video. All right, yeah, here we go. Right there. And real quick, that, that's not, the noise is not me. That's just the sound there. So, you know, um, you know what? I'll turn that down a little bit. I mean, it's not saying anything. So we don't need to hear that. It, it, you know, does that look like the same object to y'all? Because they're saying this is the same object, you know? from the other video. And if you watch the other video, they're saying that that one, right, this is green, right? If you notice, the, all the interface is green. All right, well, the other one is yellow. But it's not just that it's green and yellow, it's, and they're saying there's two different cameras potentially on the system, but they're looking into that. So to be fair to them, they're looking into that, uh, Jeremy and George, I mean, to find out more about the system and what exactly it had. Um, to be able to, right, because there is differences. So, like, you know, are they the same event, right? Is this the same object? Um, it, it just looks different, doesn't it? But, again, look how small it is. And again, I'll put a link to this, y'all. You guys can do watch it yourself, zoom in on it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of that uh, happening. But look, they can't lock onto it, and they can lock onto balloons. They can lock onto things. They can. It is. It, it's clearly not an artifact, right? On the. I mean, the housing and any of that. I mean, that's just. It's changing lenses and stuff. I mean, it's just. It's not even the housing. Like it's not yeah clearly not but is it part of the same event right i think that's still a part of it they're trying to confirm y'all so but they're you know pretty positive it is right they can't lock on to it and they're, they're, so Jeremy's saying they're manually doing that. See right there. See that? Isn't that weird? Right there. That's just weird, right? I, it's, I can't tell if that's the object did that to it or what. Or they were trying to change lint. I don't know. And it just pops to that. So I don't know if that's stitched together or what. I'm sure somebody's going to go frame by frame and figure that out. And supposedly, that's not water. Okay. That's what Mick West said. Um, in his analysis, that this is not water. Um, Jeremy never talked about it. He's saying it's over water. 
but I don't know. I don't know enough about this stuff. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion about this as it comes out and people decide if this is over water or not. That just doesn't look like water, right? It, it just doesn't look like water at all, actually. Um, but I don't know, right? I'm not an expert on that stuff. All right, look, let's go to the next clip here. And this is the original jellyfish video that they released, right? The first one. Um, so they're saying there's three videos. This one that I'm about to show you, the one you just saw, and then a third one, right, of it going in the water. That video isn't out. So that object did not go in the water, right? So we, that video is just, they don't, they don't, they don't have it. They haven't seen it and they don't have it so they can't release it right and they haven't even seen it themselves but the sources say they have but they know where it's at okay there's more they're they're on a mission to go in a skiff and say this is where it's at go find it here's the here's some witnesses you know that are willing to testify i'll give it to them i mean that's kind of what david grush did right that's very that's exactly what david grush did so I'll give it to Jeremy and George. They're willing to take it that far with this case. I mean, what more do we want from them, right? That's it. And then we just wait and see. There's no really need to judge one way or the other here, right, at this point, in my opinion. But let's take a look at this original video, and they kind of give some details that I find interesting. So, right, so everything from here on out really is just supplemental to the interview, just different parts of this podcast that I thought were interesting. Now, it's all about jellyfish. That's basically, that's what all of this is about, this whole video. All right, let's go. You know, when we first talked about this thing, when we first were watching it uh, a couple of years ago, it, it was clear that we thought it might be a balloon. It's moving kind of like yeah. a balloon. But a balloon that you can't lock on? That it... So that's important, right? Even George and Jeremy thought it was a balloon. When they originally get this footage, they're originally thinking this could be balloon. Jeremy even says it was potentially trash, right? In the Scott, right? So their initial reaction to this video is just like all of us. Is, is it this? Is it that? Is it this? Because they kind of go in the video. I don't show it, but like kind of being mad at people for having an opinion on what it was. And I, I don't know. It just seemed odd to me. They spent too much time in the episode of that, from my opinion. I get a comment here or there, especially George Dabb. He's very just like grizzled old detective. And like, it's kind of funny when he does it, to be honest with you, you know, all Twitter and this and that, like, it's kind of funny, you know, give the guy a break. I mean, he's been around a long time, veteran, you know, cut the guy some slack. I think, uh, I think people get more mad at Jeremy when he does it, but you know, whatever, man, people are allowed to blow off steam. It's their podcast. That's kind of what it's for, um, you know, so whatever, again, I don't want to get into all that, but Look, e again, even they're thinking potentially it was balloons at first because, look, as investigators, they should be the b biggest debunkers there are, right? They should be the ones trying to prove it not aliens the most, right? So that you're left with the other option, right? Like, that should be their mission the most. So, anyway, I don't know why they dunk on debunkers when they are also debunkers because everything they get, they have to vet and make sure it's right and debunk it right so anyway just an interesting uh irony dichotomy i don't know i it's uh i don't know if i'm making sense there that the the best system in our military is unable to get a lock on it that's the see that's what i said yesterday in my video that the their camera system could not get a lock on this thing and you're telling me our best camera system couldn't get a lock on balloons that just doesn't make any sense to me like and they're trained to look for that stuff. They know what balloons look like. They just, you know, I don't know. I just, the balloon thing, I don't buy. Again, I'm not saying it's aliens, y'all. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't think it's balloons. There's just too much hoopla for balloons. And again, the trade, whatever. Let's keep going. Quite a balloon. Yeah, so so that was initially when, when I was looking at But look, to think it could be, okay, you know. It's still reasonable, prosaic explanation to, to still think that. I just personally don't think that, right? But to, and especially your initial reaction to think it could be balloons. Totally reasonable, right? You've seen balloons fly in the sky. 
why would you say alien being first? You wouldn't. You'd say balloons. So that makes sense, right? Uh, but after looking and this and the more you find out, just that theory kind of, it just falls to the wayside. It's still unidentified in my opinion. And I was thinking, okay, is it floating trash? Is it some sort of, um, you know, clump of balloons? And they, they take it very seriously because this is a base incursion. This is something of unknown origin that's coming through the base. The thing is, if you look at it, it's a very bizarre thing. I'm going to tell you what people that really got th this footage that, that we don't have. There's really close up of it. What was described to me was that these things you see hanging down, that they were geometric as if like it was specifically said to me like an armor or like a fish scales. So when, when geometric pieces there, and you notice also it's stiff, right? So there's not a lot of wind from what I understand at the base at the time. It's, it's literally moving under intelligent control. The, the, the question or the thing, the fear was that it's some sort of intelligence uh, reconnaissance platform. You know how we had the Chinese balloon and it was collecting yeah. intelligence. So it's at a very secure location. And the worry is either does it have a payload and it's going to blow some shit up or Why? is it collecting intelligence? Why is it? So again, I'll put links to all this so you can check it out. There's a lot to cover here, but um, yeah, again, they also thought other prosaic explanations before, right? Confirming other details and finding out and because they go on to later say they got this video from several different people, right? They've talked to several different people, and at first they got it. They didn't know what to make of it, just like us when we see the video for the first time. I don't know why they're so upset at people's reaction seeing it the first time when they also had the same reaction. It just doesn't, it's just odd. So what we do know and what we knew before was that it was, it's not a smudge. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why it's not a smudge, but I love it. They say it's, it's first they say it's balloons, then they say it's... Um, birds and then they say it's bird shit you know on it's so funny to me the mental gymnastics that these you know straight up debunkers you know what what they try to do but again this is this is not necessary in my opinion um again that jeremy should want people working on this trying to debunk it figure it out it just gives him more information and he doesn't have to accept it is he just worried that other people are influenced by that he can't control that you know, can't try to control influence. That's dangerous. Let people throw their opinions out and then that's it. And again, he's just throwing his opinion out. But for reasonable people like my average people like myself, it's like, dude, you're also debunking. It doesn't make sense. You also debunked it when you got it. It doesn't make sense to like mental gymnastics. I mean, you could argue like the mental gymnastics you have to do to say that's an alien being floating through the sky. You know, I'm just saying as being the most reasonable explanation, I'm just saying, I don't know what it is. Could it be an alien? Yeah. I, I, yes. It is odd, man. It is an odd shape and fit thing about, and everything you learn more about it is odd, but that's with time as you learn about it. Right. We were just hearing everything for the first taking a, a little bit of time to kind of get all the data and collect it all, which Jeremy had a lot of time to do to develop his theory and his reason for it. So I think he should just be cool it a little bit and just kind of give people a little bit of space to come to terms with some of this stuff a little bit. And if there's debunkers out there, I mean, I just don't let them debunk. Who cares? Whatever you're debunking, too. I don't just I just don't I just don't know why they focus on it so much in this episode, y'all. Uh, you know, there's probably going to be parts you're going to just want to fast forward through, to be honest. So we let's talk about that. So we know it's not a smudge on the lens because the infrared would look right through it when it's looking at a distance because of the field of view. Now, I'm not an expert in this, but not only was that obvious to me, so it's disingenuous for people to say that, but it was obvious to me. But also there's a guy online and he did this kind of time lapse that you sent me, George. It was on Twitter, I think. Again, I don't like click on Twitter, except when you guys send me links and you can see it clearly rotating as a three dimensional object. So that was cool. So that, and that is a cool video to make, to be honest with you. I saw that too. Um, and that's just all they needed to show, right? Instead of saying all that other stuff, um, because that's what you get when you just let the internet at it. Don't discourage people. That's just my advice to Jeremy and George. I, yeah. You know, again, I have no problem with them. 
it's like do your thing i support y'all putting stuff out that we all get to look at you know and that's the point you put it out so we look at it and you're going to get opinions and you know i think just letting some of that go don't let it you know feed in just focus on the details of these, some of these stories maybe clear up some confusion okay um i love how george knapp's background is like boxes and you know what i'm saying just files everywhere just like again grizzled detective been on the seat you know on the case for for decades you know just like i just love it you know i love it his assistant just out of earshot over here like okay martha you know we're gonna figure this out oh man i love it and jeremy's is all perfect right just perfect just two completely different uh you know what would work on the show is having some sort of um I mean, I guess someone you might call a skeptic or debunker, if you will, official debunk, you know, someone to really just kind of, if it was respectful, right, and kind of push back on things, kind of go and really dig in deep um, to some of that. But I will say they do ask some good questions. They kind of, you know, bitch a little, and then they just they ask good questions. George Knapp asked some great questions, and so does Jeremy Corbell, man. They do a great job. Look, I'm not complaining. I'm happy that they put this stuff out. I'm happy that we get to take a look at it and find more information. Again, once you find out that they're like willing to go talk about this in a skiff, provide the witnesses, tell them exactly where to go find this video of it going in the water and staying there and then coming out and shooting off. And I mean, hey, again, what more do you want from these guys? That's that's what I mean. You don't get that with all the other UFO videos that get thrown out right pictures of ufos and stuff that people release so look i mean i'll give it to them it's just all the other little like drama and real housewives of ufo stuff that happens right just like i wish a lot of that would just go away from the community right y'all i know some of y'all in videos i just like i hear that stuff i'm just please let's go maybe you're hearing that on this video and like god patrick just move on okay okay you know what it's hitting me i'm kind of doing it myself here oh no <laughs> oh no kind of immediately debunked the debunkers on their initial things. Now, you know, why isn't it balloons? Th this is important. Like, I would be very surprised if it was balloons because these operators are highly trained. I've actually seen myself the, the training slides and, and the information that these guys go through to operate the aerostat, which is the question you had of the platform. So, you're at this base in Iraq. It's a base within a base. And now it's publicly, you know, said, so I'm going to say it, you know, as a Habania Lake, it was right by the base is right by that lake. Um, what, what we know is that they are trained, like literally, here is a bunch of balloons. Here's what it looks like through the MX-20 camera off of the aerostat right? And this is the Persistent Threat Detection Program, I think is the name of the aerostat. It's made by Lockheed Martin. And, and there's a couple, I believe there's a couple cameras and seven, I, I think seven sensors, sensor systems on this unit. And, and so they're trained to, to know before they ever start operating the machinery, this is what balloons are like. This is what they look like. This is how you can get confused by balloons. This is what a plastic bag in the wind or debris looks like. I have seen the briefing materials. I have talked to numerous people that operate this system and all of them, all of them say, we are trained on that. This is not that. So from my understanding and a lot more information, yeah, that's, that's pretty much why we know that this was designated UAP is because they excluded those very prosaic and simple answers to those questions of what, what it's not. Yeah. Fair point. I mean, I agree with that to be honest with you. I do. I agree with that. But again, I would just add, you've talked to all these experts and then found that out, right? People that just see the video and go think that's blue. They're not idiots. They just, they don't get, they don't have all that connections and get all that information. Right. So, but yeah, I agree with that. That's a good point. You know, doesn't mean it's not balloons, but it does make balloons very highly unlikely for me. 
I gotta be honest. I just, I don't see balloons at all. Cause I was thinking about that. Like, so basically all our adversaries have to do is just get a bunch of balloons and let it fly over our base and we'll go ape shit over it. Right. We'll create a whole scene. Really? That's all, that's all it's going to take to bring down America are balloons. I just don't, <laughs> I just don't see balloons doing that. Is it possible still? Yes. But that just seems highly unlikely because look at all the attention that these balloons are getting, right? That, that's all our adversaries would have to do is get some balloons and screw us up. And we're, we're effed, man. A little helium and some, you know, whatever balloons are made of. Rubber. Uh, plastic, whatever kind you get. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go to the next clip here. Yeah, look, man, we're, we're, we're doing the best we have with the best we got. Like we're taking personal risk and also trying to protect sources and everything. And also national security We're we're trying to protect national security, by not, you know, just uh, exposing everything. Like we're doing our best with the best we have, but George, we, we, we will do this. We will make sure that that trail is hunted down and we'll do it in the appropriate way without harming national security. And we will bring witnesses in. We will help bring witnesses in to testify behind scenes about this, if not publicly. Look, can we talk about real quick the fact that there's at least three videos of this and what they show? Because I, we kind of briefly showed a video when we on the TMZ special, and it was kind of confusing for people uh, about it being over the water, not over the water, what's going on. Can I explain that? Yeah, sure. Okay. So... We, we gave you kind of what came to us in kind of, you know, a raw form. Like that, that's how it came to us. Um, there are three parts to this video that apparently were somehow maintained, you know, before it was uh, taken off or somehow, because people can film the screens like as it's happening, I think. So the, the second video, it, it didn't show much. It, it wasn't as detailed. So I just didn't think it was that important. But I believe that video, because it has different color crosshairs, like I think it's like yellow instead of green. I, I believe that each operator gets to designate the color of, of the crosshairs and the information that they want. And I know, I, I believe there are two cameras that are that are going on. So I believe what we are seeing, uh, I am told, is the same object. Um, I think it's just after it was close in the base. I think it was first noticed, unfortunately, when it was close in the base. I think the second video is right after when it when it's moving kind of farther away. There's a third video where it's seen over the water and then it does these maneuvers. It, it does this, I mean, that's the money shot. Like, I wish we had it. That's the curse of the UFO world. Like, I wish we had it, but like beggars can't be choosers. Like, we got what we got but we know where it is. We know who to tell and people have seen it and we have talked with them and they've gone on record with us telling us what they saw. So that's what I know about the videos is that it was broken up into parts and it's been passed around, but that CD with everything, we know where that is. I just, what I don't understand is on the other podcast that um, the witness that I'm about to show uh, Michael, I'll put a link in the description, you, you know, go watch that if you want to learn more about him. Um, he said in that interview that he did with Artis and Tony, okay, Mick West was there, Stephen Greenstreet was there. Again, great interview, and Michael was there. It was a great conversation. Um, but he said what he saw was that, you know, he sees it come in. He sees it go by the base, and then he sees it go out into the distance until there's nothing really to watch right where you just so where how are they getting this more of this footage right and the other i don't know i'm just saying i'm just asking questions here i, I and then the other like um it's different colors right but what's also interesting is the crosshairs are different different sizes so it must be it has to be different cameras right and the other one has the ability to zoom in, right? Because it's doing the, the lens thing. The other video doesn't do that. I'm not saying it's not the same system, but I don't know. 
I wish there was a way to verify if that is the same video. Does it matter? Not really. I mean, all you need is the video of it going in the water, staying there, c coming out and shooting off. I mean, that's the that's the video. Honestly, it doesn't really matter if these two videos are the same or not the same object or not. Honestly, I don't think that really matters. I know people are going to really focus on that probably now, uh, but I don't think that matters. Honestly, what really matters right now is that they're willing to go, you know, put their money where their mouth is and go get these people to testify and talk about it and tell them where the video is and go, you know, I mean, what more? I mean, that's, that's all you can ask for, really. I think everything at this point is just kind of left up to you to decide uh, what you think, you know, which is fine. Uh, but all right, let's go to the next clip here. So I, I guess that where you were being, so this is the witness here, Michael Sinkowski. Again, I'll put a link to the description. I talk, did a whole video about him yesterday, so you can watch that. So he was at the bed, just real quick, a refresher. He was at the base. He did, he wasn't a witness to the actual event, but he saw the video months later when he arrived at the base, right? It was something they showed to other army or not army. What he was a Marine, I think other people at the base, right? When people would show up, Oh, your new guy. Hey man, check out this video, dude, this happened, you know, a few months ago in a crazy. They called it the spaghetti monster. So he was just one of those people. They got to see that and like, oh, wow, okay. <clears throat> Another thing I find interesting about that real quick is that in the interview that he did, again, that I focused on yesterday in my video, he said that when he was initially watching this video, someone behind him who was a part of the team that was there when this happened, right? So a witness to it. They, they were like, oh, it went over the water and just fell, you know, fell on the water. But Jeremy states that these people were signed to secrecy, signed NDAs and everything. And then he's just talking about it to, to Michael. Now, they don't cover that in Weaponize, but that is interesting. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but just found that interesting. I don't know. But anyway, this guy... You know, he's kind of just kind of stuck in this. He just saw the video like us, really, to be honest. Does he have a little more information? Yeah. Did he see more of the video than we've seen? Yes. But he said he didn't see it go over. Um, he said he didn't see it go in the water or anything and shoot out. So, I mean, he's seen more of just the same thing of it just floating by. Would that be interesting to see? Yeah, of course. All of that would be interesting to see. But he still thinks the same thing. He doesn't know what it is. So, um, you know, that's interesting. Most misconstrued was when, you know, when you said, like, it didn't go into the water. What you, what I believe I understand is that you never saw that footage of it going right. into the water. Right. Okay. So, yeah. let me ask you this. Um, how would you characterize the reaction from the command uh folks at the base um was that unusual how this case was handled based on what you've reconstructed talking to colleagues who were there at the time that it happened they didn't really uh, mention anything about the uh the reaction from the command or the higher-ups or anything like that um when i was shown the video it was more of just a you know cool video that's saved on the system you know something that happened months ago they didn't really brief me on you know, having to worry about this thing coming back or, you know, having to take, you know, certain per, uh, measures to ensure nothing like this happens again. It was just, you know, something that was unexplainable. It happened and then that's it. I find that interesting. I just find that interesting because, again, one of the guys who supposedly signed an NDA was right there with Michael when he watched it one of the times. That's what Michael said in his interview. Well, he didn't say he was the guy that signed the NDA, but I'm just sort of connecting those dots because Michael's saying the guy that told him, hey, it just went over the water and fell into the water. Um, he's saying that guy was part of the team the, the, that was there the night that this happened, right? So 
and Jeremy said that the people that were part of the team the night that it happened all signed NDAs and that the, the government came in, took the tape, okay? Um, it was on a CD. They took it away. And, you know, what leaked was the people that recorded it on their own computers because it's a feed that gets sent out. And if you put in the right address, you can pull up the feed of this camera on the system and you can just watch it. I guess people watch it for fun and they saw this happening. And people recorded it and had different videos of it. And that's what Michael saw. He didn't see the official whatever video like that. Again, he, what he saw was that. So I, it's like, why wouldn't have anyone recorded the other part? I mean, that's, I don't know. And I wonder if Jeremy has the whole thing or if that's all he has. I don't know. Um, and Jeremy kind of implies that there was like a third camera that caught it go in the water and shoot out. You know? Because again, the way Michael describes it is that in the video he saw, it went out and faded away. So what other camera caught it? What other system was out there? What other camera? What kind of camera? I don't know. I mean, this is all interesting. Um, look, just asking questions. Just find it fascinating. Just trying to piece all together. And of course, I want to be fair to Michael. Again, the guy is like trying to remember something from six years ago. And, you know, I'm sure he's just telling things how it is. And it's it's not so much what Michael said. And is he going back on his word and that? I don't really, you know, dude, the dude's trying to remember things from you know, a long time ago and his memory's getting jogged and he's sort of updating things. I have zero problem with that. It's more just what Jeremy Corbell is saying and how that overlaps, right? And that some things don't line up still, but that doesn't mean anything nefarious either, y'all, okay? It's just, I, I'm not saying that either. I'm just saying it's interesting. I don't know. But yeah, you know, props to Michael for coming forward and saying it and talking about it. Um, nothing but respect for the guy for doing it, you know, whatever. Um, you know, my thing is like, I don't know if his opinion is really that important of, you know, what he saw, what he thinks it is, or is it? Because some, you know, maybe he has a little more experience in this than I originally thought, to be honest with you. And Jeremy kind of brings that out, um, in him. And I found that interesting. Um, so again, Michael doesn't see the video of it going in the water and coming out. He never sees that, but he's not saying that it's not possible. He's just saying he hasn't seen that video. Okay. But he's not going to confirm that that is a thing. But again, Jeremy's saying I have other sources, so I can confirm that again, I'm willing to go. I got the other sources, you know, whatever. So you know, that's just basically Michael doesn't have access to that stuff. And he's just a separate sort of source and witness, right? That came out of just nowhere, nowhere, right? Like the general population, if you will, right? Just saw a video and commented, hey, oh, I know about that. I got shown that. So basically someone Jeremy wasn't expecting or was, right? Was hoping more people would come out. But anyway, so I don't see any issues there. Nothing nefarious. But does Michael's opinion matter on what he saw what does he think? What does he think it is? You know, that sort of thing. Because if people are trying to frame, oh, he changed his word on what he saw and this, and I don't think really it's that important, you know, too much. Does he have an expert opinion? To some extent, yeah, he's familiar with these systems. And he thinks, um, I'll let you tell. He's going to tell you in his own words here real quick. So are you an expert in identification of things through FLIR? Like, I, I don't know. I literally don't know. Are you an expert on identification of things through FLIR, forward-looking infrared, on this platform? Uh, Pete, did specifically? Yeah, or just FLIR in general? We had a, a separate contracted um entity uh, of personnel that that were the experts that were imagery experts that that could identify you know things like uniforms and specific vehicles and specific weapon systems so i would i wouldn't say that i'm i'm an expert in that realm i've just seen I'll, enough footage to be able to tell what you know a lot of the things were 
basically more than you and I, the average person, right? And he's viewed footage like this, right? So his answer, it's better than most. Is it what we should rely on and, you know, dunk this guy and run him through the rings on Twitter? No, I don't think that's fair to the guy. I think the guy should be left alone, to be honest with you, and just left to, you know, move on from this guy, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I, you know, hope the guy doesn't get much hate. And I, again, I find him pretty credible. Again, I think he's just trying to remember what he saw. But his analysis of what he thinks it is or isn't is interesting, right? So with with that, I, so I understand there's parameters to your expertise. But with that said, you, you've seen a lot of shit. You've seen a lot of drones right. with bombs on them. Um, does this have the same morphology? Does Is this consistent with anything you've ever seen before? No, I've never seen anything like this before. It's a head scratcher. It is. One other question. I'm telling you. Um, all right, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. It's a lot to take in, right? Uh, this is an interesting case. Sounds like they're going to follow it through, George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell. And what more do we want? They're taking it, right? They want to take it to a skiff and take it to Congress and get these people to testify and bring attention to it. I don't know what more you want from them. They're willing to tell people this is where it is. Go get it. Go see this. What is it? Again, they're not saying aliens. And they state that very clearly in the episode. So they're allowed to have their opinion, what they think it is. We all are. And that's how we should all be looking at this and all trying to work together to just find out what's going on. And don't be mad at what other conclusions they come to. And let's just, you know, let's do this. Anyway, I thought it was an interesting video. Can't really see too much. Uh, the other video is absolutely better as far as just the appeal of it, right? Uh, but connecting them and making part of the event, it does make it interesting. So I, I am interested to see what people do with it online. Now that it's out, it's freshly out. So anyway, thank you all again for watching. We'll see you guys on tomorrow's video uh, where I'm going to be covering the chandelier photo that Jeremy Corbell dropped. And he talked more about that incident and a video and how that's going to come out. And that is interesting as well. So we're going to dive into that tomorrow. Uh, unless anything just crazy breaks between now and when I recorded this video. So anyway, y'all have a great night morning whatever it is for you we'll see you tomorrow remember every day is a gift peace fetters